Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. The Speaker of the Council of Representatives, Fozi Ibn Abdullah Zaina, said that the wide-ranging freedom of opinion and expression enjoyed by the press and media outlets in the kingdom reflects their democratic approach and ongoing reform in the kingdom thanks to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's visions and directives. In a statement marking the Bahrain Press Day observed every May 7th in the kingdom, the Speaker praised the patriotic and responsible role played by the press in Bahrain, noting that it is the cornerstone of the comprehensive development process in light of His Majesty the King's unlimited support and interest of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Speaker Zainal has highlighted the enlightening and positive role played by journalism in Bahrain, citing its commitment to assuming its national responsibilities during the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. She valued highly the professionalism and responsible freedom of the Bahraini press, as reflected in its constant keenness to obtain information from credible sources, calling on everyone to cooperate in supporting the press and journalists to, so as to enable them to cope with the ongoing digital and technological development developments the world is witnessing. Speaker Zainal extended her congratulations to the local press and the Bahrain Journalists Association on the occasion, recalling with pride the contributions of the pioneers of journalists and media personnel in the kingdom, commending the distinguished efforts exerted by the affiliates of the Information Affairs Ministry and the local press to enhance press and media work in the kingdom. Shura Council Chairman Ali bin Saleh Saleh has asserted that the Bahraini press is using digital means and modern methods in undertaking its media and enlightening role, praising the keenness of the press to highlight the landmark achievements attained by the kingdom thanks to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's sound visions. In a statement marking the Bahrain Press Day, Saleh noted that since the launch of His Majesty the King's reform project, the Bahraini press has flourished and its role in consolidating democratic principles and the fundamentals of the freedom of opinion and expression established by the National Action Charter and the Constitution has grown. He affirmed that the Bahraini press is an essential partner in achieving the government's plans and programs, praising the support of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for strengthening the pivotal role of the press in the kingdom, being one of the pillars of the democratic process. As Saleh extended his congratulations to all journalists in the kingdom, praising their dedication and commitment to the ethics of the journalism profession. They sure chairman pointed out that the ongoing press uh, renaissance in the kingdom and openness to modern digital media reflects a determination to consolidate the status of the press and its role in cementing national unity and highlighting the values of tolerance pluralism and coexistence embraced by the Bahraini society The Information Affairs Minister Ali bin Muhammad al-Ramahi has affirmed the constant support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al-Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad al-Khalifa to the press and media out of their interest in consolidating the press and media freedom. In a statement marking the Bahrain Press Day, al-Ramahi extended his deepest thanks, appreciation and gratitude to His Majesty the King for consolidating the press and media freedom based on the royal interest and the freedom of expression, which is guaranteed guaranteed by the Constitution. The Minister also extended thanks and appreciation to the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for putting in place all requirements for the press and media institutions in the Kingdom to exercise their national role freely. The Minister also praised His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's interest in confirming the role of the press and media in increasing the accomplishments of the Kingdom's development and democratic process. Armehi said that this year's Bahrain Press Day is celebrated in the midst of the kingdom's ongoing recovery from the repercussions of the novel coronavirus pandemic at all levels thanks to the successful efforts of Team Bahrain, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, noting that the occasion is an opportunity to recall the patriotic and honorable role played by Bahrain's press and media institutions within the front lines of the fight against the pandemic. The information minister expressed his deep pride in the rich history of journalism in the kingdom and his keenness to play a constructive role in the nation-building process, noting that it is still contributing to various development fields in the kingdom and defending the gains of the nation and its people, as well as taking advantage of the ongoing digital revolution to continue playing its noble role with accuracy, professionalism, impartiality and responsibility. 
the minister extended his sincere congratulations to the press and media community in the kingdom on the occasion praising their role in enriching Bahrain's press and media experience as well as contributing to its development march. He wished Bahrain more progress and prosperity under His Majesty the King's leadership. During the fifth legislative term and over the course of the four uh, sessions, uh, the Representatives Council achieved legislative gains during 114 regular sessions and other three exceptional ones. Among the most important and prominent legislations that were implemented during this term are the Children's Correctional Justice Law, the Alternative Penal Code, the adoption of two decrees of law on unemployment insurance, the environmental law, the maritime law, the civil aviation law, the amendment of the law on collecting the cost of building and developing infrastructure in urban areas, the amendment of the reserve law for future generations, the social security law, in addition to several legislations related to the economy, financial and commercial access. The Ministry of Works, Municipalities, Affairs and Urban Planning announced that the number of users of the 21E services provided by the Ministry has increased during the first quarter of this year. It has reached more than 8,000 users, whether through the Ministry's website or the national portal. The Ministry stated that it continues to develop its services out of its keenness to keep pace with developments and in pursuit of the government's goals. In international news, Saudi Arabia's Ministry of Industry and Mineral Resources said it has secured six billion U.S. dollars for a steel plate mill complex and electric vehicle battery metals plant as part of plans to lure 32 billion dollars of investment into the mining sector. The ministry's target would fund nine mining projects for mid midstream minerals and metals, according to Industry and Mineral Resources Minister Bender Al Khayef. The kingdom is seeking to diversify its econom economy away from oil by investing hundreds of billions of dollars into a plan called Vision 2030 initiated by Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Mining is one of the sectors that has been identified for expansion. An army spokesman said today that one officer and 10 Egyptian soldiers were killed after foiling a terrorist attack on a water lifting station east of the Swiss uh, canal. This, uh, canal. The uh, security personnel were killed after clashing with a group of militants who attacked the station, which also resulted in five others being injured. The spokesman said the terrorist elements are being chased and besieged in one of the isolated areas in Sinai. The military said at least five other troops uh, were wounded in the attack. No group claimed responsibility for Saturday's ambush, one of the deadliest attacks against Egyptian security forces in recent years. The Arab coalition said it has released 163 Houthi prisoners as part of the kingdom's humanitarian initiative. 108 prisoners were transported to Aden, Yemen's interim capital, and nine were transported to the Houthi-controlled capital, Sana'a via two separate flights. It also said that 37 prisoners were transported to Yemen via land routes for humanitarian reasons and given the fact that they reside in areas that neighbor Saudi Arabia's borders. The coalition added that nine foreign fighters were handed over to their country's embassies. <laughs> 